I didn't expect to be back here again this year. We passed a very similar bill last session with a different body, with a, a Republican body, and it was vetoed, and we just missed by a couple of votes on the override. So we went back to work on it again this year, and it passed by a wide margin with some adjustments to the bill by a 254 to 98 margin in the House. So we have a, it was broad support, nonpartisan, and both parties are on the bill. Okay, but since the last month, since the veto, we've had a lot of stuff coming out here that you've been hearing. One is, you know, you may hear that the increase from one to five megawatts is too much and will destabilize the grid in the market. That's a big falsehood. Renewable power generators less than five megawatts, a small portion of the region's total energy production, because they are locally throughout the grid, add stability to grid operations by providing energy, diversity, and distributed generation. The five megawatt cap is reasonable because the limit is where the region grid considers the power plant to be wholesale producer. The five megawatt cap also allows businesses and communities to right-size projects for their electricity needs, maximize savings through economic scale. It is an important part of the solution to the high electricity cost and new supply. Uh, I'm going to skip a couple of the big ones that we get lost in. <laughs> you will also hear right now the big talk is it's going to hurt ratepayers. That is a big falsehood. In addition to the PUC finding that net metering does not shift significant cost to electric rates, 365 removes regulatory barrier to preventing many small businesses and communities from producing their own low-cost power or entering into a privately negotiated power contract with local renewables. 365 enables renewable power for generators between 1 and 5 megawatts to participate in the retail power market and offer consumers more competitive options, bigger savings, and greater energy independence. The other big talk right now is that it's a subsidy. It will cost ratepayers millions of dollars. That's the biggest talk right now out there. There is no such mention in the bill's fiscal note or reported by the PUC. Moreover, the fiscal note from last year's net metering bill says to this extent state, county, and local governmental units are able to install their own renewable generation facilities for those governmental entities that may benefit from lower electric costs. It may receive revenues from the form of net metered payments for the excess power generated. You're also hearing, this is the biggest, the two biggest talks right now, is it only going to benefit large scale solar companies? HP Fit will benefit New Hampshire rate freeze by re increasing the supply of low cost power from local sources such as biomass boilers, New Hampshire's small hydro facilities, and solar arrays on landfills and rooftops. The local power will avoid the high cost of transmitting electricity from distant power plants. It also will benefit all consumers by adding more competition to retail power sales. More locally produced power means more savings, more energy independence for New Hampshire. You also hear that the, the other talk is that it'll shift costs for consumers who net meet it to those who do not. The PUC has found no evidence of any significant cost shifting from net metering. Consumers who net meter under the bill will use PUC approved rules designated to prevent cost shifting and ensure fair rates to all ratepayers. Furthermore, utilities will use local net metered power to offset imported power, which will maximize ratepayer benefits and prevent cost shifting. Liberty Utility already handles net metered power in this way because it saves their customers money and projects on their customers against regional cost shifting by other states onto New Hampshire ratepayers. Fuel diversity brings security and lowers rates for all. <laughs>